All right. For those of you who've never done this, and look at my mo heavily modified rig first. We've got a car battery here that is for the Bash Yaks motor. And we had to actually make a hole here. So we put one of those, uh, I forget what the fitting is called, but anyway, a fitting here. And what we've got, we've still got some water down in there. Not very much. We had a couple of holes open up where we've put some wires through, and the wires. Uh, anyway, anyway, got a lot of leaks. Anyway, so now we don't have any leaks, but uh, Kayak Girl is still nervous about it because it took on a little bit more water. So we are going to put a bilge pump in here. Only it's a little different than a normal bilge pump because we don't have enough room um, from where the float would actually finally turn on to the thing actually working because of the ribs that are in here. The ribs make the uh, would make the uh, uh, bilge pump sit up too high, and already you've got three or four inches of water in the boat before the thing ever even turns on, and that is a lot of water, especially in this boat because it's a flat bottom design. It doesn't have a keel like mine, and so four inches of water in there is like whew, 20, 30 gallons of water, enough to make it sink. Okay, so she has also has her bilge pump here that she uses mostly for this area. Now, when she was taking on water and sank a few weeks ago, we had to use it on the inside where I just showed you. And, of course, it came in super handy. It has about, oh, two and a half feet of uh, hose on it, 500 gallon per hour, hooked up to the battery. Um, and this blue, this, this is all heat shrinks, and it goes all the way around sh sh twice, so it's about five or six feet of line. I think it was six feet when I, when I cut it. Um, so anyway, but now we're going to put one on the inside. I did the same thing on the, on mine yesterday, or a couple days ago, and it works really well, and we're going to do it in here. And the first thing we have to do is decide where we're going to actually put it, and I think we're going to put it right back there, if you can see in there. You can see there's water in there. At least you can see the crud on the bottom. The rod holder right here. So I may actually have to, I'm gonna have to be able to sneak my hand back in there to be able to glue them in. Can't screw them in on these boats, so we have to glue them in. And so I end up using a lot of cutting board, which is what this actually is, right? Polyethylene, I think it is, uh, cutting board. And they're only about six bucks over at uh, Wally World. Okay, so this is the rest of the game plan. Instead of an actual bilge pump, we're going to use an aerator pump. It's still the same 500 gallon per hour pump that they use in their bilges. Um, but in this case, we're going to mount it like this. It sucks from right here. So we're going to put a shelf in there that it sits on top of, kind of like so, right? And there will be a shelf that it's sitting on top of. And we'll cut this off fairly short and drill holes in the sides of it um, so that it can suck water from the sides too. And basically, it'll get us down to about that deep, and that's about an inch and a quarter, or something like that. And that'll get us down to the very, very, very bottom of this thing. And although it will never get all of the water out, it will keep it from getting so much water in it that it becomes dangerous. And that's what we're attempting to do here, right? So we're going to do this. We have sandpaper to scuff everything with. I have to cut this off. I'll use a uh, actual PVC pipe cutter. Actually worked fine on this. It does try and follow the thread. So once you get one full time around, go back around, and then you'll have to snap it off and sand it. Which I'll do, probably show you real quick. Marine Goop, if you don't have it, get it. Uh, I actually find it in an auto parts store here in town. I think it's Advanced Auto Parts. Wiring pliers, the through hole fitting, my Dremel with, I know it's the wrong cutting tip for it, but it melts through the plastic like crazy. Um, the actual switch itself, I don't know if you've seen these or not. It uh, has two electrodes, one on top and one on the bottom there. And it mounts in just like that. And so what we're going to actually have to do is cut this off because I don't want this much water in my boat. That's about two inches of water. So I'm going to cut it off just, just below that electrode on the inside there. And that's what I did on my boat. And that means we get about an inch and a half of water before the thing turns on. And it will run until it basically can't suck up any more water, which leaves you maybe a quart of water in the boat. It's wonderful. Uh, so we're going to do that on this one. I'm going to cut those off here in just a couple minutes, real short. And using the Dremel, right, we're going to just kind of cut right, cut right through there just by, you know, it'll just take it right off. And also, we want to make sure, see how it has these, they're almost like vents, right? They're going to act like a vent because the water has to be able to flow through and under this thing. So after we cut it off, we have to make sure we put, you know, vents back in it 
or ducts, right, so that the water can flow back through it um, to drain properly. And oh, gee, many Christmas waterproof um, uh, spices. We have a, a splash proof, uh, ruggedized fuse holder, three amp fuse. Some heat shrink. I like to not only are these waterproof, I like to heat shrink them just because <laughs> it's a salty environment, you know. And some alcohol to clean off surfaces when we're gluing. And other than that, I will show you as we go. Alright, so we're rolling here again. Now what I've done now is I've measured, uh, first of all, I used my shop bag to get the rest of the water out of here and dried it out with a paper towel. But see how the, the ridge that goes here and here? They go all the way back. And so what we're doing is, out of cutting board, we're making a plate that is going to sit on top of there, right? So we're going to have to rough up the tops of these so that the marine goop is going to stick to it. And then, of course, the, uh, uh, the opposite uh, on the cutting board piece that I cut. And so when I measured it all out, the best way to do this is five inches across, which is, covers the entire, you know, both sides, both ridges, and four inches like this, which this is forwards, backwards, side to side, right? And then, I mean, how we're going to mount them. The hole here, we're going to put a hole that's an inch and an eighth, and it is just perfect um, for the actual pump to slide down through. And then I'll show you what I'm doing after that. But that's how the thing's going to be held into place as if it were a normal bilge pump. Okay, so we cut it, right? So it is four inches wide and five inches long. Actually, it's the other way around because it's going to fit in the boat like this, right? So the width of it is going widthwise. And the hole, like I said, is just big enough uh, for the uh, intake for the uh, aerator pump here. And I'll show you that here in just a second. All right, now, this is the uh, aerator pump. And I, what I did is I marked it right there. You can see the little black mark on it. And when you just use one of these, a normal old uh, PVC cutter, just a pipe cutter. And uh, like I said before, it does try and follow the, the threads, so only go around it one time or you'll just turn this thing into a PVC spring, so <laughs> and you don't want to do that. Um, also, make sure that you have your fitting, the nut on the back side here. Make sure that's on there, because when you cut this off, it's going to leave some burrs. It leaves some burrs, and when you back it off like this, it'll smooth them right down so you can get the thing on and off again, right? So make sure that that's on there. Uh, very important. Okay, pay attention. All right, we're going to do that now. All right, so like we said, I cut it off about an inch and about an inch and an eighth, and I did left that uh, the nut on, which I was able to just easily back off of there now, and it regrooved everything, and so everything works perfect. And so now the what we're trying to do is I'm, I'm basically going to have to re, I'm gonna, basically going to have to wire this entire thing. And get all but the last little bit of uh, everything but the plumbing to the uh, through hole fitting finished before I stick it in here because of this little hole. It makes it really difficult to work back in there. Rod holders, electric, 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 electric. You can see it's kind of complicated. So in order to get them back in there where I want them, I'm basically gonna have to put it all in there, tighten up what needs to be tightened in there, glue it in place, and just hope that it stays. And um, It'll sit in place on the shelf, kind of like so. Can you see that? With the the nut will be on the back side holding it in place. We'll drill some holes on the sides, which I will show you. And uh, we're going to vent it out that side of the boat. It's going to blow out somewhere over here. Uh, all right, so back to back to it. Okay, real quick, we are going to wire this now, and I've got it's already crimped here. This is a waterproof uh, butt connector. Um, 16, 14, 16 gauge. This is 14 gauge wire. Okay, so we're going to put this on and heat shrink it. I've also got another piece of heat shrink that I'm going to put over that splice, okay? Um, this sits down in the bottom of the boat. Corrosion, everything else. I also, on every single one of my uh, connectors here, you'll always see me put dielectric grease on there. Um, I don't care what brand you use. Dielectric grease um, it gives you a good seal. And so all I do is just actually just kind of, uh, you know, take the wire and I just kind of dip it in the nostril, nose of it there, and just kind of make sure it's not a whole bunch on there, just enough to cover the wire and give me a, a, just a little bit better seal against corrosion. 
All right, I just wanted to show you that. We're going to do the black ones, the brown ones, the red one, and blah, blah, blah. And we'll be back. Okay, that's Friday again. Hey, um, so here's what I've done. I showed you the assembled pump, right? I had to wire it all together um, before I put it in. And then, like I told you, I also had to have the plate and everything I had to actually screw it on inside of the boat because this hole is so small and uh, got that glued in got the switch glued in right and they're working um, I've already tested it this green right here is uh, the three wires the two blacks and the red uh, from the pump and the uh, the switch and so I put some heat shrink on them brought them up to the to the battery case and I put a uh, Island on this one. I'm actually going to take them just like I did mine. I'm going to put a big uh, 60 amp or 50 amp uh, uh, alligator clip on this and put the motor on it too. That way, when I come home, I can just quick disconnect and I'm done. Um, it's been working on mine over there. I really like it. Uh, and then, you know, of course, we just these are semi permanently attached to the to the uh, positive, and it does work. And so we brought it up through an existing hole that was actually for the GPS. And so uh, I decided I would just pull this out. What this is, this is a rubber cork, basically. You can get it at the hardware store. Um, just solid rubber. And you drill out the center of it, right? Um, normally it's about this. Let me, let me show you one. Hold on. 